your 20s, and I need to be less hard on myself. So this is like me teaching myself in this moment. Like they're for mistakes. They're for trying new things. They're for experiencing as much as you can. So you have an idea of what your life wants to be, what you want your life to be like when you are 30, when you are 40. Like whoever came up with this idea that once you hit like 40 years old, life just sucks. Like no, life, life will get better every year of your existence. We're your besties in your ear. Back for another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Yeah. Yep. Welcome back to another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Live from three, two, one, Charlotte. <laughs> which we caught, which we in, and not kidding you. We're like, we're going to Charleston, Charlotte. Or where are we going? Like we can't, it, they're so similar. The amount of times I've told people we're going to Charleston is unhinged. One time I went to Boston with my family. No, I went to Chicago with my family and I took two friends and I told them and their parents we were going to Boston and like we arrived in Chicago. And they were like, what? Wait. You told them a different city. Yes, because I was, then you arrived in. Yeah, it was like a family vacation, and like we like so my parents booked the tickets. And then we got there, and I was like, "Oh, we're in Chicago." You kidnapped them. Yeah, <laughs> that's like us with this though. I'm like, uh, like that would terrify me if you were like Jordan. We're going to Texas, and then all of a sudden we end up in Florida. I'd be like, "Wait, what?" And you'd be like, "Oh, my bad. Oh, sorry, wrong <laughs> city. You could never like you. I it it just." Whatever you are, be a good one. And it just doesn't fail with you, like, the type A traveling. <laughs> okay. It's good. To my defense, I needed to ask about the flight um, confirmation number so I could check in. I, it's logical. It's and a no, logical question. No, literally. Well, maybe we should do Pink Whitney before I get into the tangent because I might be here for a while. <laughs> okay, so we're obviously at a bar. And if you're on YouTube, this one's worth watching on YouTube because the bars, we FaceTimed Alana and she was like, excuse me? This is like if Mean Girl were a bar and it's called Lost and Found. I'm lost, Jordan's found. <laughs> No, literally, literally. And there's like pink booths to our left. Like the bottle service is so cute. They have really cute signs everywhere that kind of rem reminds you of being just like drunk and confused. And I I'm here for it. <laughs> Happy and silly. Like you just, you come here and you're like, oh yeah, I want to get a table. When um, I'm dead, lost and found. So what you and I would do when we were here is we would walk up to the bar. Well, we would take shots of Pink Whitney, but let's talk about the flavor of Pink Whitney, most importantly. Oh, the flavor of Pink Whitney is dangerously good. And it's the number one flavored vodka. Did you know that? They're our sponsor. Oh, of course I knew that. The number one, and it's pink. It's delicious. It tastes like a delicious pink. It literally tastes like I'm drinking pink lemonade. I could drink it with a straw. I put Skittles in it the other day, by the way, and it was phenomenal. I saw that. It was so good. I love putting candy in my drinks. And when I did that, I did the 1.5 or the 1.75 liter bottle that you brought over. Yeah. And because, okay, listen, we're all for the shots, but also everybody, how about this? Instead of going to the bar and taking the shots, go to the liquor store, buy that bottle, take her home, shots for everyone, take it on the lake. That's like the summer necessity. Oh my God. And the best part about Pink Whitney is you don't need a chaser. You can just drink it straight. Yeah. So if you want to look cool, party trick. Oh yeah. <laughs> so back to my story. Okay. Um, so sometimes <laughs> when I talk to Alex, I feel crazy because I'm like, I feel like I'm annoying her with all my questions, but okay. So long story short, my reservations got put under Alex because she's like a Marriott member. So she gets points. She's an American airline member. So she gets points. So it makes sense to put under, go under your reservations. I get upgrades. Sorry. Yeah. Upgrades. So in my head, I'm like, I have to ask her all these questions. I'm like, what's the flight notification so I can check in? What's the hotel number so I can check in? And I feel crazy asking, like, am I knowing her? But then I'm like, wait, no, these are needed things to know so I can live my life. It's logical to be like, I check into the airline, like, on my way to the airport. Like, that's when I check in. Like, when I'm en route. Okay, so I can see why you do that. I don't do that because I don't have, like, the upgrades yet. So, like, the sooner you check in, I think the more opportunity you have to get upgraded to, like, priority up boarding. Probably. But for, yeah, last night Alex texted me, she's like, have you checked in yet? I'm like, it's 10 p.m. I checked in at 10.01 a.m. and my flight was at 9.59 a.m. I was like, oh, good job. <laughs> Yay for you. Oh, God. Okay, I have a question. Oh, God, what? Okay. I'm scared. I was, in, I was with like a group of people last weekend and one of them goes, what comes before part B? And I was like. Sex? What? No, what comes before part B? Part A? Party. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like one guy was like, what comes before part B? And the other was like, part A. And like walked off and I was like, I'm asking Jordan that. Wait, that's funny. Because it took me a second. I was like, is the answer going to be party, part A? And that's he was like, funny. part A, right? 
Part A, part B. Part B. Part B. <laughs> Somebody the other day was like, she's so type B. And I was like, some people are like type C, D, E, F, G. Like so lax. Oh my God. No, there's people more relaxed than you. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like you're not, I mean, you're relaxed, but not to a fault. No, thank you. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice of you. <laughs> um, so Alex and I are struggling a little bit because um, we're fully synced up on our periods. Yeah. And, and I think the problem is I think we sunk to mine, which is usually later. Yeah. But I, we got your symptoms. Yeah. So I'm usually like, um, routine as can be. I will, I mean, I used to get my period at the same time every Wednesday at like 8 a.m. That's so you of you. <laughs> but in your body. <laughs> no, literally. Like, be, like, work. be like, 8 a.m. Wednesday, here you go. But ever since Ew. I've been spending time with Alex, it's been getting a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. That's just our bodies know. Uh, just, it's like, my body's like, relax and enjoy the party. Your body's like, and what time is the party? But now my symptoms are so bad. Like my boobs are hurting. My brain is so foggy right now. And I feel nauseous. But this is what I I'm love. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> and the follow-up <laughs> question is, when's the baby due? And what are you going to name her? Him? Um, I, I need to get the thought. Hold on. Right here. Okay, we were talking about our periods <laughs> with a guy in the car. And what I loved was no balking. What's like, balking? Like, no, like, uh, like. Like, like, how high school are you? Okay, you're welcome. You guys didn't get it. Like, the girls do. We have them. Like, every single person on the planet that's a female that hasn't had, like, a, like a thing gets them. If a man box, <laughs> box, box, like, B-O-C-K? B-A, like, W-K, box. Okay, if a man box at your period, I'm going to be like, you're the most immature man ever. Are you 12 years old? Go back to high school. Yes, I agree with that. Like, go back to health class. Like, every female and every girl you're going to date and your wife, by the way, will have a period. Well, and I think there's a, a level of, like, and not even not being awkward. Don't clam up either. Yeah. Just, you have to almost make, like, one little, like, oh, yeah, wouldn't know. Yeah, or, like, you have to make some kind of, like, also, it's like not that gross. It's beautiful. Okay, it's extremely beautiful. <laughs> I just wish it wasn't red. Like, can we get pink periods? Like, what would you do? I would love periods so much more. Is if it wasn't like blood. If it was just like pink or like purple, or you got to pick your color. I'd pick Ooh. blue, light blue. Oh, I think I'd pick like um a rainbow. Mm. Love a rainbow stream. Rainbow squirting out. Of you <laughs> <laughs> you I, can taste the rainbow. Th that's not bad. Uh, you know what? I, somebody the other day said. What? Imagine when you get a spray tan and then a guy goes down on you and then he's licking the spray tan. So then I thought to myself, I, this might be my company. Flavored spray tans. Taste, tastes good. Honestly, if spray tans could taste and smell better, the world would be a better and safer place for us. I think so. Because they smell. Well, and they, I've never licked one, but can't well, imagine. I mean, I mean, it's not great. No, I wouldn't think it. But what if it was like um, candy flavored? Like you're like, I want cotton candy flavored. And it's like, <gasps> All I picture is a guy going down at a girl with the spray tan and coming up. It's like an Oompa Loompa. No. <laughs> His face is like, okay, this is what I was going to tell you. There's this video going around. I don't know if you saw it, but this girl at a wedding, like this guy picks her up and like puts her over her shoulder. Have you seen it? No. And then she gets off and there's a pad stuck to him. Wait, a pad? A pad. Was she wearing a pad without underwear? I don't know. Oh, that poor, poor. Was it, was the pad bloody? I, I, not, no, I will say not noticeably. Oh, uh, that poor girl. Is that not so bad? That, that, no, 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 no. I hate pads. They were the worst invention ever. I, yeah, I used to have to wear them though because I couldn't get the tampon in. Oh, same. Yeah. Tampons scared me. Yeah. Well, we've talked about this yeah, before. Yeah, okay, next. Okay, okay, okay. What are we, I, right before we started recording, I go, so what are you talking about? Jordan was like, uh. No, literally, that's the thing. Like, period fog is such a real thing. So real. And like every few minutes, I'm like, contraction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. Um, okay. So speaking of periods, when we're on our period, I think you and I feel a little less confident because we do get bloated. And with summer coming around the corner, a lot of people have been asking us how to feel more confident, especially because in the summer you wear less clothing and you wear a lot of swimming suits. Okay. First of all, can we just talk about how Memorial Day and needing a swimsuit came out? Like it was just January, and then I was like, oh, so Monday we're going to wear a bathing suit out of nowhere. No, literally, Alex goes, by the way, we're going to be going to a lake one day. And I was like, I'm not coming anymore. I'm not wearing a swimsuit. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I do think that everybody goes through this. Yes. And you feel, even at your best, even when I'm like, okay, we're in shape, I'll look at the man, I'm like, uh, Like, there's no such thing. And I'm like, what, how do you fix that? 
well, I would say a lot of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Jordan just in her mind goes, okay, so she doesn't have the answer. So I'm going to have to come up with one. And I'm like, shit, I didn't prepare for this. I thought you'd have something to say about confidence. And I'm like, no, I just struggle with it. No, I do have a few things. Um, I will say the biggest thing when we do wear swimming suits in front of people, nobody cares. Like, I don't care what you look like. I only care what I look like. Nobody cares as much as you care. Also, if you have somebody in your life who cares too much and they're judging you, they probably shouldn't. No, they should not be in your life anymore. No, this is good because you know what you just did? You took us all like, it's not, sometimes it's just not about you. <laughs> no, I mean, think about it. We're all very selfish human beings. Yeah. And at the end of the day, are you ever thinking about what I look like? No, I'm just always thinking. No, I'm never thinking about what you look like. I don't think what I look no, like. No, it's like we'll take a selfie and like your eyes could be closed. Like you could not be in it. And I'd be like, it's cute. Also, I'm like, I don't care what you look like. I just care what I look like. Yeah, right like, now. have you ever taken a group photo and then you're like, I love this one. And you send it back to the group and everyone in the group's like, did you look at me? And everyone's like, no, like everyone has to look out for themselves when it comes to photos. <laughs> no, there'll be like a whole, there'll be like a picture of Alex and I, and I just literally look at mine, her eyes will be closed. And she's like, Jordan. And I'm like, oh wait, you're there. I forgot. Yeah. Like that, that, you know what? That's a really good point. That is how, okay. So you're like on a boat and you're like, I feel self-conscious, but then you're like, nobody. Okay. This is a really good point. I have never one time looked at somebody and been like, they don't look that good. Or something. Like I've never even thought about them. I only care about me. You're not right. Once. Also, like I said before, if you have a friend who does care and is judging you, cut them out of your life because one, your friend should not be basing your worth off of your weight. And two, if your friend has that much time in her mind, like tell her to go get a hobby. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, th I can't even imagine that world. Also, like I wouldn't care if you were a size zero or a size 12. I would love you the same. Uh, yeah, I think it would be. I do think that's so. Wait, I find this really fascinating. Because I'm trying to think of one instance. There's been times. Uh, now, this is a scenario where I have noticed, like, if a girl it has lost, like, 20 pounds. I'll yeah. be like, damn, girl, you look good. Yeah. I mean, I definitely look at my friends. and I'm like, damn. But I'm never like, oh, honey, never. Like, I have never one time even thought. I've never even looked at guys and been like, he's in shape or he's less out of shape. Like, I don't. I literally only think about me in that scenario. <laughs> no, and wow. especially when it comes to our bodies, we are such... I don't want to say selfish humans. We're so um, self-absorbed with our own bodies. It's well. This is the thing I was thinking. It, this isn't. This doesn't feel selfish. Yeah. It's actually self. It's actually harder on yourself. Fully. It, I actually think it's the opposite of selfish. Well, I remember. So when I'm on my period, in my I don't know if I actually blow. I I think my my mind bloats because I walked and looked in the mirror after I changed, and I was like, oh my gosh. I look 20 pounds heavier than I usually do. But then I thought to myself, like, I was like, okay, Jordan, you wore the same outfit three weeks ago when you felt great about your body. It feels and fits the exact same way. So are you actually bloated and do you look different or is your mind literally playing tricks with you right now? Yeah. And I was like, it has to be the tricks because the outfit wouldn't fit the same as it fit three weeks ago. Right. I, I truly don't think our bodies fluctuate as much as we think. Like if I have a bad night of eating the night before, I'll get up and I'll wear baggy clothes. Same. And I've, this past six months, I've like tried to stop doing that. And I'm like, no, put on what you would typically wear and I'll feel so much better. Yeah. Also, one thing I've learned is, and I told you this, we wear the wrong sizes because we think we're this, and it's like the smaller size will zip and it will look better. But for some reason, we're just constantly like gaslighting ourselves into thinking we're a different size. Oh my God. I remember one time you told me that I, I have body dysmorphia with the sizes I wear. And I like thought about that. And I started to realize that all of my clothes are, excuse me, too big for me. You do have it. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. I'm like, you don't. I, don't. I also realized too, if you want to be more confident, learn to wear clothes that fit your body. Like for me, I can rock like a romper or a dress, but I'm never going to wear a crop top and low rise jeans. Mm -hmm. So you just have to figure out what, what fits with your body. Yeah, I agree with that. Also for confidence, like I bought my first ever one piece. Like I bought a super sexy, cute one piece for Monday because I knew I'd be in my head about my period. So I was like, okay, well, I don't feel comfortable wearing a two piece or a bikini. So why not get a one piece that I feel super sexy in and make it so it's like a fun one piece. So I got like this hot pink one piece that has like this, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like a cutout, but it covers all the parts that I want covered. I love a one piece. So it's like, just like clothes, pick suits that flatter you. Okay. Let me ask you this though. I think it was you that said it one time. And then another Hopefully. friend of me just told it to me the other day. She said, it's so funny when I pull up like five photos of me, even when I do the outfit, this or that's, it's always the other ones. 
People will always pick the ones that you don't. So what I've been trying to do lately is like get like I used to not wear like I hate strapless stuff on me. So I started being like, well, let me just try it on and wear it. Like, let yeah. me just see. Like, I think it's cute, but I'm just like so automatic to wear the same things over and over again. So it's like you branching out on the one piece mm -hmm. or just trying something different that you want to wear. But all when I scroll online to shop. I'll say, no, not wearing that. No, not wearing that. And it's like, order some of those things and try them on. Because if you don't try something different and like see how your body looks or like take a chance or then sometimes you just get caught in the same routine and like you're still being hard on yourself, but you could find a different style that you love. Yeah. Like, I think a lot about like the Kardashians, right? Because they, they were just talking recently about how like they kind of epitomized this whole like, we, they pitted everybody against everybody on the internet. Like they were talking about self-image issues. Yes. I think a lot of it is how you dress. Like, if we dress ourselves a certain way, you'll be way more confident. Oh, fully. I'm the worst. At, like, I, I need to learn how to dress, like, tap into that, though, is my thing I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know how you do. Just trying a bunch of different things on, I guess. Like, go, like, do, you have this, like do you always buy the same styles? Always. Same. But I'm like, why do I, the only reason I don't buy the other styles is I automatically say they're going to look bad on me. Or you had like a bad experience in that style once a long time ago and you refuse to try it out again. Yeah. And it's like, why would we not just do that? Maybe that could be like one thing we try this summer is I'll look at all these bathing suits online and it's like, why don't I pick one I wouldn't, I would love to wear, but I would never wear, order it, just see. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I did with the bikini or one piece. I've never in my mind wanted to wear a bikini because I had a bad experience with one one time because you and I have long legs. So it, it's always like, it, it's so bad. It's so tight on the, the cooch mm -hmm. where I'm like, no, I'm never going to wear it. But I decided to try it out again. And I was like, wait a second. I love this. Okay. See? Yeah. Everybody should, maybe that could be a tip we try. I'll try a different type of swimsuit too. Like let's go outside our comfort zones, try something on and we can feel more confident. Yeah. Also, I don't know if I told this tip on the podcast before, but in therapy, I learned that my therapist was like, okay, in order to be more confident, not just about your body, but just in general, you need to look at yourself naked every day in the mirror for two to five minutes and tell yourself you're beautiful. You're awesome. Like all these good things about yourself and you need to do it every day because it's truly the fake to you make it type of mentality where if you tell yourself something enough, you'll start to believe it. And it is so dang difficult to do, but I swear to God, I, I go through ebbs and flows when I do it because I have a roommate. I can't just like stand naked and be like, Hey, what's up? But when she's gone, You're beautiful, I'll, when she's gone, I'll do it. And like, it's very emotional, but it works. I absolutely love that. It's hard. Like really freaking hard. It's okay. I think that you're, it's so true the difference we can make on us just by, just by the, like the mind switch. So even if you want something, not, I don't love that example in, in this realm, but just saying like, I am X, Y, Z. Yeah. Like you are confident. You are well-spoken. Even writing it or like looking in the mirror and saying it, like the other option is you're telling yourself you're not. Yeah. So you're believing one of two things. Like you, if you tell yourself that, like you're right, it's so deep rooted. And like you start, there'll be a time to... You know when you go to the gym and you're like working out your arms? Yeah. And you're doing it for three months. And then one day you're like, my arms look good. Mm -hmm. It's like that. I feel like one day you're going to be like, holy fuck, I'm hot. Muscle memory. Yes. Over and over. Yeah. I mean, even today, like I said, I walked out and I was like, ew, Jordan, you look bloated. Then I was like, wait a second. Switch the mentality. You look beautiful. You're awesome. You're more than your body, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait a second. I do look great. It's work. Yeah. And you're like my brain. Yeah. Be because at the end of the day, like your mind can play the craziest tricks on you. It's, inc it's insane. We are... Like, are we are, you look in the mirror and, like, that's your biggest competition. Your reality is truly your brain. Fully. Yeah. So, for people who want confident tips, pick things that fit your body. Look in the mirror naked and tell yourself how awesome and beautiful and hot you are. Yes. And three, I think you just have to start training yourself into realizing, like, your worth is not based off your weight. And if you think that too much about, like, other people, then, like, you need to do some internal work. Like, if, you, if you're so consumed with... Like your worth being about your weight, I like you. One, you need to. Like, I just hope that you're not like thinking that about other people. Okay, so you're saying like if somebody is thinking, well, I think a lot of people think their attraction is based off their weight. Yeah, I think people are like, I'm hotter if I'm littler. Yes. Where did that come from? I don't know. Social and, media, <laughs> and I hate it to its core, right? Because I think oftentimes, I was with a group of guys the other day. And this beautiful girl walked by. And one of the guys said, man, she works being thick. 
Oh. Okay. So initially, and, I, and, and it was collective, like, this girl was hot. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what do you mean she works being thick? And he's like, she's hot. Like, she's not your traditional size, and she's, like, working it. And I was like, I initially wanted to be like, okay. And then I was like, no, but that was really nice. Like, he had the wherewithal to recognize, okay, not the traditional, he said that, size. And he's like, she's, like, so hot. And I, yeah. she was dressed accordingly to the body. She was confident as all get out. Like, she wasn't in baggy stuff. She was like, no, I'm hot. We've talked about that. Like, your energy is so, it will literally, like, like ooze on other people. Yeah. 100%. Like, if you want, like, if you just, like, walk into a room and you're, like, I'm the hottest girl here, people will believe it. Yeah, if you're, like, oh, my God, she's just hot. There's just something about her that's real hot. It's, like, there's not something about yeah. her. She knows she's hot. And she also, just told you that. How many times? This is, like, I hate saying this, but, like, I think the whole world should realize by now, it does not matter how hot you are, a man isn't going to like you or stay with you based off that because the hottest women in this world have been cheated on. Well, and I think, too, I think... I think the hotness could be the initial attraction, mm-hmm. but how many times, I remember it back when I was single, hot guy, you go over to him, hey, what's up, yo? Like, um, like if you don't have a personality, if you don't have, like, if you don't, lo- if it's not from the inside out, like, you don't have a chance. With yeah. now, well, you do with other people, like, every, I believe in compatibility in all senses, and everybody does have a person, mm-hmm. but it, I think the least important thing is how you look. Yes, because looks fade, but personality stays forever. Yeah, and and like that's what gets you, looks gets you one second. I mean, personality gets you like the happiness, the charm, the sweetness, yeah. like the love, all that, so well, much bigger. And why would you want to be with someone who just liked you based off your looks? Like how exhausting would that be? Well, we've seen that. Yeah, it hasn't worked out. We've seen two people, two very hot people. So, now, listen, sometimes, sometimes there's the hottest couple and they are the nicest and they are the happiest. It, it's out there, but it's never like, it's not the rule. No. So, I mean, I think this summer we're, we're going to challenge everyone to just, like, don't, I just, and this is something I'm going to work on. I don't want to skip out on plans because I don't feel confident. Like, I almost was it, was going to come up with an excuse to not participate in the lake day because I was like, I don't want to wear a suit in front of all these people. But, like, we just, we life is too short. We don't have time to allow our body to prevent us from doing things that we really want to do. Okay, well, I fully agree with that. So, I think... I love that, actually. Like, I really love that. The whole don't miss out because of how you feel. But I think the biggest takeaway I just had in terms of body image was no one's thinking about you. No one is. Everyone's thinking about themselves and how they look. You're so right. And then on, in, on top of that, you think that's selfish to say. But I'll be like, no, I only care how I look in the swimsuit. It's not selfish. I'm harder on me than anybody else there. Yeah. And then to step out of that and be like, no one, hey, good news. No one cares what also, you look like. Also, like, I love you so much. Like, I will just be like, oh, my God, you look so cute in that whatever color bikini you're wearing. Like, I would never once be like, oh. Bad like, choice. Never. No. Because the whole time I'm going to be like, she looks so cute. Okay, now let's analyze my body the entire day. I'm the same way. I'm like, God, that's a really cute one piece. Ah! You know, but it's like, why? For what? Like, everyone, like. For, for, that's I feel like our new saying, for what? Like, for, like, can, if, and if somebody can answer it, like, okay, let's answer it. Let's play this game. All okay. right, I, I hate me in a swimsuit. For what? For, for what? So then what? What are you going to do about that? Not have fun? So like you, you let that one little thought process ruin your entire day or like a really fun experience with friends and family? You don't talk to as many people. For what? You're not nearly as outgoing. Like, yeah, like that's a great question. Like, for what? So don't let, don't have a for what summer. <laughs> don't, yeah. And, and, okay, so I also love, go outside your comfort zone on bathing suits. Like, just even if you're like, that would look terrible on me, let's order it, try it. Like, you did that with the one piece, you love it. You can return a swimming suit. Yeah, do it from Revolve. They'll just ship it, they'll give you the return label. Yeah. And then, or go to the store and try it on. Like, yeah. Like, buy it. I guarantee, though, if we get outside our comfort zones, we'll like different things. And then, no one's thinking about you. And stand in front of that mirror naked and tell yourself that you're amazing and beautiful and smart and pretty for two to five minutes. I'm excited about that. I'm going to go for two minutes and then build on it. Yeah. I mean, two is... And since you like to journal, you even could write how beautiful you are every day. I've, I've been back on that journey. I mean, I have been... You wrote four pages the other day. Yeah, and I wrote six on the plane. I got on an airplane and they made an announcement. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> you paused. I was like... Wait, you got on an airplane. I got on a plane. <laughs> like, did something happen and where you stopped? Then, and then you did what? I got on it and the girl goes, just want to let you guys know there's going to be no Wi-Fi. And I was like, whoa. So me and my thoughts. Wait, how long was the flight? I mean, it was here. So it was an hour 15. It wasn't bad. Oh, yeah. I didn't have any Wi-Fi on the flight here either. It was like, but, and so I was like, okay. I'll, and I, so I put my laptop up too. 
And I was like, you're going to read and you're going to journal. And man, like I was just flowing out. And every time I do like a purge like that, I get off. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I do feel like drained for a second. Mm -hmm. But if you just start writing, people will DM me. They're like, what are you writing about? And I'm like, Any, whatever's in your head. It doesn't have to make sense. You just put it on the paper. It's, I don't think people understand the power of getting your thoughts onto a piece of paper. Like if you can't afford therapy, I highly recommend journaling. And people are like, what's the prompt? There's not one. It's just like, okay, so I was, the, and, okay, like, let's do an example. Like, uh, I don't want to go to the boat day because I don't, I don't want to wear a swimsuit. Like, just that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't I want to, and then write down your response of your brain. Why don't I want to wear a swimming suit? Uh, I don't like my arms. Okay, why don't you like your arms? My arms actually look, like, I mean, they look pretty good. Like, okay, I'm wearing a pink, like, anything. Go. Off, yeah. Pop off. It's, a, it's just amazing what clearing your head will do. And it's also nice, too, because... As much as we love to tell our friends what's going on in our life, sometimes it just feels good to tell like an unbiased source that not that your friends would ever hold anything against you, but like it, a journal can literally hold nothing against you. Your thoughts are sacred. Well, and, and these are the ones, these are the ones that you're not telling anyone. Yeah. And you, here's what I've learned too, reading that Relentless book. Everybody has these thoughts that you would never say out loud and you think people would think you're absolutely insane and crazy and a bad person, right? Yes. Those are what you write in the journal. Yeah. And putting them out on paper, you I promise you will feel better. So much better. I love it. I feel like we've given some great tips. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. four. They were good. They were good. Confidence. Thank you. Those were fucking phenomenal tips, and you're welcome. Yes. Quick pause to talk about Barstool Bites. Is there anything better than having that first sip of coffee in the morning? No. You just talked about it. It's like getting your first kiss every single day, which is euphoric for lack of a better term. Yeah. Stella Blue Coffee supports pets. Unlike big coffee, for every purchase, a portion of the proceeds goes directly towards helping Paws Animal Shelter, helping dogs find homes. Really what's better than coffee and helping pets? You can get yours tomorrow. Available on StellaBlueCoffee.com and next day shipping on Amazon Prime. I would just like log on to Amazon Prime right now, press order. And they have iced coffee now. That's right. Get your coffee now before they sell out. Stop waiting in line at Starbucks, ordering on confusing apps, having your name spelled wrong, Jordan. Alex is like always right. Yeah. It's no other way. Or Alexa. Uh, or Alexa, that's right. Stop having your name spelled wrong on the cup. Go to StellaBlueCoffee.com and use promo code MEAN, that's MEAN, M-E-A-N, for 10% off your next order. StellaBlueCoffee.com, promo code MEAN. Ooh. Which there's three guys here. I don't know if any of them would want to answer this, but I did see it online. And it was like, would guys prefer, if given the option, the first 90% of a blowjob or the last 10% of a blowjob? Well, I would assume no. Oh, wait, actually, no. Ooh. Well, can, I know. Can they do the rest themselves? Or the beginning? Like, can they, can they, if like someone picks the 10%, can they do the 90% themselves? No, I think you just get one feeling or the other. That's actually interesting because we've learned that blue balls is a myth on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they would choose the first 90. I don't know though. Cause maybe they want to come. Well, here's the thing. I think if, I think if they choose the first 90, they obviously get like longer. And then like the last 10 is obviously jam packed with like pleasure, but it's like, do you want a short amount of time? Well, what would you pick? I don't, if you were like for in a girl situation, I know I've been thinking about it nonstop and I really, why am I leaning towards the first 90? I'd pick the 10. Would you? I, it's, I'm, I'm game either way. I'm on the fence. I'm picking the 10 because, well, then I, I love all parts. You know? I was going to say, both have happened and I've been happy both ways. And the 90 is nice because that's longer. Let, let's put them in minutes. That's 90 minutes versus 10 minutes. I thought the 10 minutes would be great. Yeah, those 10 minutes would be phenomenal. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just like a really good argument. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Okay, actually, I have to say something. No, like for the podcast. Oh, I was like, well, don't say it in the mic. <laughs> your face. Okay, so I, I, I know I've talked about this with you before. Okay, so I love foot massages. Okay. And the other day I was getting a very intense foot massage. And we all have pleasure centers in our feet. And I've talked, remember how I went on the boat that one time? Yes, and you said you felt the thing. Yeah. It happened again because she, this girl was like pressure pointing my foot. And I'm just like, holy shit, like. Why are the feet so pleasurable? No, not the feet. Your feet. You touch mine, I'm out. Really? Don't touch them. Okay, I'm not, also, I'm not saying like I have like a foot massage fetish where I get off. No. It's only happened twice where I'm just like, wait a second. Why does this feel so good? Wait, no, no. It's not a fetish. It's not that. It's everybody <laughs> has them like somewhere else. Yeah. Like you touch my boob and it's over. Like True. You, like that. everybody, ha you love a neck. Like, yeah, that's very valid things. 
I don't know. I mean, you just have one there. It's I think like, it's great. It's like when you were born, they just like slap on pleasure centers. They're like, here, here. here. <laughs> and I think they change over time. Like I used to be so ticklish. You could tickle me now. And I'm like, uh, mm -mm. even in the ribs, nothing. Like oh. I'm not going to be like, it used to be, I can't breathe moments. But, Seriously? Oh, I would be like giggling my ass off. Yeah. But so it's like your feet, you could grow in or out of maybe the pleasure points. I hope not. Yeah. I mean, I hope I never grow out of the boob pleasure points either. Okay. So we were going to talk about structuring like structure in the summer because we're all all over the place. Yeah, summer's chaotic. So chaotic. And you and I travel the most. So I feel like one thing I've had to do to ground myself, because here's the thing. I think I always say structure is the foundation to spontaneity. Yeah. So you can travel all these different places. Or I've realized I can travel all these different places if I do one, no, three of three things. Mm -hmm. I have to wake up in the morning first thing, drink a whole thing of like lukewarm water. Because mm -hmm. I just... I. It's something about it's grounding and I can't check my phone until after I've done the water and one coffee. I have to read even one page. Like, and then journal even like four letter or four sentences. So like if I do those two things and then some kind of physical activity, but not, I'm not saying you have to go to the gym. Sometimes I do 10 push-ups and like that's it for the day. But it's like just doing those things and then checking the phone. I feel like you could be anywhere in the world. You could be at the lake. Like you could be crazy. You could be whatever. Yeah, I feel like... People assume a routine needs to be this like perfect exact same thing every single day. But I think you really just need to have like one or two things you do consistently yes. to just kind of like adapt you into your day. Like for me, mine is also physical activity. If I don't work out at the gym, I like to walk like 10,000 steps or go on like a 30 minute walk. In the morning, I have to drink like I have to drink black coffee, black hot coffee, and then iced coffee. Okay, love it. So it's like, even if I'm not home, my body still is getting that sense of routine. So it's like, wait a second. Like, you need to be a person today. Yeah. And then you don't feel so all over the place. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't want us to like... People do these odd negatives sometimes. They'll be like, oh, you travel all the time. And I'm like, right. Well, there's a world where you could do that. Also, there's a world where people travel for work on a weekly basis yeah so just make it work like okay so instead of so I asked I was on Instagram live earlier and I said what's everyone's favorite lake drink mm -hmm. and one person responded and was like water because I'm not a college kid who has to depend on drinking and I said oh that's so backhanded negative and that's the those are the comments too like well traveling all the, and it's like no you can just step back and be like all right when I travel all the time I do xyz boom routine boom I can do it yeah also too like if you don't travel and you're just like crazy summer I would just try to have like one day where you're very grounded like make sure every Sunday it's your day where you're making sure you're getting enough sleep mm -hmm. you're grocery shopping you're doing all of your errands like you just need to have some consistency in your life because like that little consistency will help you be less feel feel less chaotic on a daily basis yeah have you ever stood outside on the grass like in barefoot if I'm telling you there's something Alex You've been having one of these questions in a long time. It's so grounding. Have I ever stood on grass? Outside, on purpose. Yes. Like, for, to ground yourself. Oh, not to ground myself. <laughs> well, I know you've stood on grass outside. <laughs> no, actually, it's the funniest thing ever because I can vividly picture myself standing on grass at my house I grew up in, and it just feels so good. Because you're actually connected to the earth. So you're yeah. like, I thought it was the dumbest thing I had ever heard. And then I did, I went outside and I was like, okay. And I was like, whoa. Also, after someone just mows the lawn and it like smells like mm -hmm. grass or if after it rained, mm -hmm. I Happiness. miss lawns. I know. I miss grass in general. There's like fake grass. There's turf right here, but they've got real grass here. Charlotte's just like such a normal, like so normal. Every time we travel, I go home and I'm like, I need to get space <laughs> <laughs> the walls are actually closing in on us no literally i was on a so i met the nicest sweetest girl at the airport today okay and sh that's one of the questions she asked me she was like how do you live in the city without space and i was like oh sweetheart no you don't but also on top of that so she she was the easiest person to talk to and so sweet but something that she brought up to me she was like i love mean girl pod because it makes me feel less alone because my mom always said your 20s are supposed to be the best years, years of your life. And I literally go, Oh girl, like Alex and I can confidently say that our twenties will probably not be the best. I couldn't speak for you, but I said, they're not going to be my best years of my life. Like, I don't think your twenties could be the best years of your life, nor should they be. I would hope not. Cause we're not going backwards. Well, and also like your twenties are for you to make mistakes and learn like in what world, at least, I should say our generation's a little different because people are like inventing 
everything at like 12. But a lot of people I think that are more millennials, which technically we are, they're always like, oh, I fucked around in my 20s and I really got serious and found my dreams in my 30s. No, I think, I think the best years have got to be the 30s and the 40s because it used to, I used to say the more you know, the better. But now I think it's the more you find out. Yeah. Less about like what everyone's told you. The more you experience. Yes. Like I'm so, I'm kind of like realizing I spent a lot of time taking what everybody else thought Alex should do and trying to like absorb that and live by that. And now I'm like, okay, well, hold on. That's not working. So let's just do, let's take what we know works and what we want to try and do that. And it's like, by the time I'm in my thirties and my forties, like I'll be living this life that we want, that we've created, that we chose, oh, we. We, <laughs> that we love. That Stop. wasn't like told to us, but that we were like, let's do, you know, take bits and pieces of it. Yeah. In your 20s, you can't even have the wear with all of that. Your 20s, and I need to be less hard on myself. So this is like me teaching myself in this moment. Like they're for mistakes. They're for trying new things. They're for experiencing as much as you can. So you have an idea of what your life wants to be, what you want your life to be like when you are 30, when you are 40, like, Whoever came up with this idea that once you hit like 40 years old, life just sucks. Like, no, life, life will get better every year of your existence. And you know what I think too? I look on um, really like photos of my mom and I'm like, you were so hot in your 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, I was just so happy. And I'm like, yeah, like you just grow into yourself. And I used to always try to rush it. Like when I was 25, I was like, can we figure everything out? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you just, there's just a different plan for you. You can't, there's no such thing as being like, I'm going to figure it all out by 28. And then I'm going to live that life. It's like, no, no, you're not. What's the saying? Um, it's like, when you try to make plans, God laughs at you. Or what is it? Yeah, when we make plans, God laughs. Yeah, like you, your life is, I truly believe your life is made before you were born. And you can try to, to navigate as much as you want, but it will snap you back. It's going to snap you back and it's never going to be the path that you thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And it, But it's always like, it's so for a reason. I can't, I can't get over, okay, making a mistake or something not going in the right way so call it adversity. So you go through adversity and you think on the other side of adversity, I can't wait to go back to the way things were. Wrong mentality. Why don't we go through adversity and then say on the other side of it, I'm going to be different. Yeah. I'm going to be better. Yeah. And so it's like you're in, you're in the time, you're in the shit storm and you're like, oh my God, at the end of this tornado, I just want to go back to the way things were. No, I want to go back to being better because I just went through this. Yeah. So like take purpose from going through it. And it's like, that's what your 20s are. It's like messing, fucking around to find out on the other side, oh, I'm a lot stronger. <laughs> Fuck around to find out. Yeah, and it's like you come out and you're like, wait, I came out better for that. Well, and I also think too, I would say that this month is going to be very hard for a lot of people because a lot of people graduate yes. high school and college. And I think everyone assumes that when you graduate college, you're supposed to know everything. But I can confidently say my worst years of my life that I've lived so far were the, the two years post-college because I had no idea what I wanted to do, what I was doing. And it's such a hard transition going from college where everything is structured to literally like, here you go. Here's life. Figure everything out. Yeah. And, and you don't know when you're in it. Yes. And so it's so hard to be like, okay, so I'm just, it's literally one foot in front of the other. You're still, and all of your friends, when you graduate college, all of your friends are in such different places. Some get the corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. Some don't have a job. And it's like everybody, and you start comparing yourself to everyone. You're like, what path are we supposed to be on? And it's like, let me just tell you. Oh my God, you're moving, you're making new friends, you're breaking up, you're getting in new relationships. There's no such thing as the path. Yeah. I think something I've been trying to tell, tell myself constantly is like, you got to give yourself grace. Also, like, why would you want to have everything figured out when you're 20s? Like, you're, that's a long life to live with. That's just boring because you already know everything. Well, and I think, too, if you, if you mitigate risk, so you say, all right, I might fuck this up. I'm all right with that, though. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm cool either way because I'm going to come out on the other side either stronger or, yeah, it worked out. Then the next time risk comes out, you're not scared of it. You're like, yeah. I'll take that risk because I know I'll either be stronger because I learned something or it works out. Okay, that's, like, great. I think this summer just needs to be a summer of giving yourself grace, being less hard on yourself, and the summer of confidence. I call it light energy. I've been journaling this. It, the lighter the energy, the more that can come in. So, I love that. Yeah, and so taking things, too, being like, that's just not that big of a deal. Like, it's or, just not that serious. You say, for what? Like, there's times where I'll be like, I don't know the path. Who cares? For you, what? You're not going to learn it by... One of my friends the other day, their mom texted them and said, I'm so worried about you. And they responded and said, that's not going to make it better. And I thought, whoa. 
I love that. And and that's the same for us with so many things. Like, I'm so worried about X, Y, Z. Okay, but does that worry make it better? No. So light, lighten up. My mom always told me that worrying will never help you out. Like, because I was a worry, worry child. And she always would be like, Jordan, worrying is never going to make the situation better. And to this day, I still tell myself that. It doesn't, like, what What are we freaking out about? Like, in, relax and enjoy the ride. Put the seatbelt on for, if you want. For what summer? Yeah. I love that. Ask yourself. Time to talk about better help because we know the Mean Girl Pod is a massive proponent of therapy and this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself is a lifelong process. This is because we are always changing and always growing. You guys hear us maybe 17 times an episode mention therapy because it's better to play <laughs> offense instead of defense and... Well, you just are who you are. Mm -hmm. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and self-understanding to help you discover your best self. BetterHelp connects you with the licensed therapist who can take you on a journey of self-discovery and meet you where you are. Sometimes you become so busy that self-care can be brushed to the side and it is... I've done that, but I recently started going back to therapy and you have been going and it makes the biggest difference. Like, it, it's just like... I don't think we can love it enough. Therapy is the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. What's a time that you've put your needs last? I would say we, when, whenever we're both not in therapy, we're doing that. Yeah. I mean, or if I've been in relationships where I put my needs last and then like people don't understand that you being selfish sounds so bad, but like you need to be selfish in your life. Yeah, and, and so having a therapy session where you get to talk about things you're going through, like you're just a better person because of yeah, it. Yeah, being selfish does not make you a bad person. So ready to put yourself first. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch at any time. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Mean Girl today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Mean Girl. Okay, so we have... Oh, my God. <laughs> what? No, I'm just... I'm laughing about these questions that we have. Question for the pot. Need to know how weird this was. Name's been changed. We're going to read it verbatim. All right. My husband and I were out for drinks with his friends, Ben and Jamie. They've been married... They have been dating six plus years, married now. We know them really well. His good friend, Ryan, and his new girlfriend, Sadie, they've been dating maybe less than three months, and we've met her maybe twice. Okay, so Sadie's new. We're all sitting at the table. I was across from my husband. Jamie was next to me, and Sadie was at the end. So the new girl's at the end. All of our significant others were sitting across from each other. My husband had ordered a whiskey drink and was done with it, trying to get the two berries out of the bottom of the drink with a straw. Sadie, sitting diagonal from him, asks if she can have a berry and reaches out her hand to take one. My husband says, no, come here, and then proceeds to feed her a berry into her mouth off his straw. I know. <laughs> Jamie and I immediately turned to each other, super uncomfortable, and I was upset, but I'm wondering if I was overthinking it. So Sadie's the newcomer, and this girl's been married to her husband, and he's got a berry at the bottom of his drink. Sadie asks for a berry. That's weird that she asks for a berry. And he says, no, come here, and then feeds her one out of the straw. In front of everyone. He goes, they're fucking. Um, I think so, too. This is my immediate thought. In what world? Okay, so he says, she says, I don't blame Sadie. I just thought it was so weird of my husband, while he thought it was harmless and funny. Dying to know what you guys think. We've been together for 12 years, married for three. Okay, I don't know if they're having sex because why would they make it so obvious? It's almost like, like that's a big fat slap in the face. Okay, the only, I'm going to go for, I'm going to take the husband's side for one second just for like argument's sake. The only thing I can think of is he was trying, well, one, he, maybe he had 12 of these drinks. That's like, that's number one. Number two, he's trying to be inclusive to the new girl. No. But I know I'm with you. I'm, I, that's just like the only argument I can think of on the other side. There's no argument in my mind. I would, uh, I will, I think I would actually slap him if he did this to me, if my husband did this to me in front of all of our friends. I always think too, like don't, maybe the rule could be like, if you wouldn't do it with your brother, like it's weird. Like if, <laughs> if, you're, if you're out with significant others, like imagine your brother being like, come here, like, no, what, ew. It's just such a slap in the face to his wife because he didn't do this behind the scenes. He did this in front of all of their friends. That's what I think is weirder. Everybody, and in front of Sadie's boyfriend too. Everybody feels awkward in that scenario when any, when there's couples out and any guy hits on another girl in the couple scenario, everybody feels so weird. Can you imagine if you, me, Graham, and let's say I had a boyfriend, we're all out and Graham just fed me a cherry. I'd be like, this is so odd. Like, what, like, <laughs> like, what would you and my boyfriend do? No, oh, like that's crazy. I don't, what do you think? You think they're, you think they're <laughs> fucking, you said? 
<laughs> I, d- I don't I don't think that they're having sex just because I don't think that they would make it that obvious unless this was, this was like part of their plan to start telling everyone that they're going to all get divorced and break up and then those two are going to run off in the sunset together. I just don't know that we take it off the table though. Did the is the husband like pissed off at his wife does he does he think his wife did something behind his back well also i think this too oftentimes like the one-time offenders are like the repeat offenders yeah so it's never i'm never surprised when someone's like oh my god you're never gonna believe who hit on me while we were out i'm like i guarantee you I you will. line them up i'll get it right it's also like one is this the first time your husband's done something shady and two it's like it's not only in front of his wife, it was in front of Sadie's boyfriend, who he's also friends with. And the other couple, too, in the middle. So you're like, everyone's like, it just was, like, so awkward and flirty. Like, I personally think that, like, this sounds drastic, but in what world do you want a husband that does that? That is so disrespectful. Because it's not just, like, shady and, like, gross. It's just the lack of respect he has for you and your friends and Sadie's boyfriend is what really turns me off. Yeah, and I don't, and I guarantee you this guy, it's, it's almost a level, because I have a friend like this, it's a level of, like, entitlement. Yeah. It's almost like a level of, like, no, I can. No yeah, I can do whatever I want. No one here is going to do anything about it. I'd be interested to know jobs. Like, I'd be interested to know incomes. Yeah. And I guarantee you it's, there's some kind of something at play. Oh, maybe he has something against Sadie's boyfriend. The, the weirdest, and then... And then, hey, Sadie, don't take the berry. Like, you know, it's weird to say, can I have a berry to begin with? I think that's weird. Well, no, that is also when she's the new girl. It's just odd to be like, like, even, this is what I think is weird too. If, if Graham's got a plate of fries in front of him, you can ask for a fry. Yeah. Not the new girl I've met twice. Huh. No, it's, you have to earn the respect. Yeah, it has to be like, we got to be brother sister status with each other. Yeah. It's like, yo, let me have, let me have the other half of the burger. Not weird. Can I have a bear? You don't need the berry for what? There's a whole bar behind you that will literally give you 50 berries if you want. Uh, yeah, I think it, this isn't even like, can I have the seat next to you? And half of us are standing. It's a berry out of a drink. That's, no, I, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm starting to think maybe we've exchanged eyes some. Maybe somebody's DM'd somebody. I just, I don't think, okay. And I think, I think there's been some DMs, maybe some eye exchanges that have happened. And it was a flirty little play, and they're, like, texting about it afterwards. Uh, like, that, or maybe this guy thinks that Sadie's boyfriend has flirted with his wife before, so he's trying to get back. Like, I don't, I think more, it, or the more I think about it, I think it's more him trying to assert his dominance and get back at the guy versus his wife. Like, I don't think this is a direct slap in her face. I think he's trying to prove a point with, like, Sadie's boyfriend. And I think they have a thing. Yeah. I think I I think it's not about anybody else besides those two. So it's very inter- it's very I would be curious to know what, like other people thought about this because there's so many different we like need more info. I want to know, but I I would be checking on this if I'm her. Every time we're like, give us more information. Give us more. Please. But no, if if I'm if I'm the girl who wrote in, I would not tolerate that. And like I don't want to be extreme, but I think I think you have to end it. I this I don't want to be cra- like crazy, but I probably would. I would consider that a, a level of cheating. Well, there's just there's just no scenario where this is the first time. Also, if he's doing it in front of you, imagine what he's doing behind your back. Yeah, and I, I just don't think this is the first time he randomly decided to feed a girl a berry through a straw in front of everyone and said, come here. Just hand her it. Hand her the yeah. hair. Something's weird there. He's that, he's that guy that, like, will go to strip clubs behind his wife's back and, like, purposely, like, go in the room and touch the strippers just to, like, prove a point. Just, yeah, like, creepy stuff. I'm afraid he would take her there. Yeah. And then be like, you're being... I feel like he would take her to the strip club, make her think it was her idea, have a stripper give him a lap dance, and then tell her she's crazy. That's the kind of guy I feel like we're dealing with. I'm, I can, like, envision the guy so well in my head of what type of person this is. And if she writes and is like, he's a really, like, innocent, nice, like, I would be, like, so perplexed. I'd be like, was he blackout and drugged? Yeah, and then what, and he thought it was innocent and funny? I don't know. It's just weird. And I want to know what the other couple thought, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to know what Sadie's boyfriend thought, too. The read on that, like, it, like if they were all, because there's a chance they were all on set, and it was seriously nothing. Yeah. Or they're like, no, it was, like, really awkward. Yeah, I want to I wanna write up from every single person. Yeah, please submit. You can be <laughs> aliases. Let's talk about mamitas. Oh, I love a mamita. Because want to live large this summer? Yes, I do. Do it with mamitas. And okay. really, is there anything better? You walk into a bar on a hot summer day, you just talked about it, crack it open. Mm. It's time for a lot of sun, a lot of music, and a lot of tequila. 
Mamitas comes in seven delicious flavors, mango, pineapple, lime, and the new cocktail pack, Paloma Spicy Marg, Classic Marg, mm. and Tequila Sunrise. You know, we always say we love Paloma, but right now, I would do a Tequila Sunrise. I would love a margarita flavored. Ooh. There's just some, when I think of summer, I think of Mamitas. That's, and pick up a, like a variety pack, go to your friend's house, go to the boat, crack them open. I mean, it just sounds like. Sit on the roof, patio, even sit on your side, or not sidewalk, um, driveway. <laughs> yes. And just enjoy the sunshine. Yeah. Made with real tequila and only 95 calories. Find it at drinkmamitas.com or order it on GoPuff. That's drinkmamitas.com or order on GoPuff. Okay, so in the last episode, I briefly touched on how my mom was like, oh, so-and-so, of course they're staying with them because the sex is so good. Yeah. I, I, every time she says it to me, I'm like, there's not a world where you put up with things because the sex is so good. I mean, not in my world. But I do... The internet was like, oh my God, of course you would stay because the sex is so good. And I was like, what? Were they more men or female that said that? Mainly more men, okay. I would say. I did under, there was one comment though that I thought, okay, this is, this is fair. The booty call. So if you know that you had like incredible sex with somebody and you're like out late one night and you're like, I just want to have sex. I do see calling them for that over and over again. But yeah. I would say an emotional connection or like working well to get like there's so many things on my list of relationships before good sex is that do you agree yes I mean there have been people that I have really enjoyed the sex but we've had no I think I did I tell you this on the podcast or just in person that I mean still to this day there is one person that I vividly think about when you were like when someone says the best sex you ever had it's one person I think about and it was when I was like 25 but in no world would I ever want to date them because the emotional connection was nowhere near there. Okay, so, so I think about it this way. I'm like, okay, if the sex is so good, but the emotional connection sucks, okay, then it has to end. In my, I mean, in our, I feel like in our book, yeah. I would say, like, I'm like, that's not enough to stay just because it's like phenomenal sex. Flip side it, fabulous emotional connection. The sex isn't that good. What do you do there? Like, I've had that too. I think it truly needs to be, at least for me, I think it needs to be either... 60, 40, or 50, 50. Close, close to, I'm down for a 40. Mm -hmm. And I think you could settle for like airing in the 35, 65 sometimes, but yeah. like it ebbs and flows. But there, I cannot fathom a time when the sex, because I think the sex gets better when the emotion is better. Yes. Okay. That's not crazy. Because I, I think too, when you just said like the emotional connection was so strong, but the sex wasn't that great. It was great at a time, but I think that emotional connection turned more into a friendship we're roommates and then we became roommates and then you never want to really have sex with your roommate. But I think if you, like we've talked about so many times, you can work on it and get it back. I was just so young where I was like, I'm not really willing to put in the effort at this age. Like I can find, and I want to find more people out there. Yeah. No, and that makes sense. Yeah. But I, and I hate to do this because I re no. Okay. Maybe I could argue it both ways, but I could see some guys like, she's hot, and the sex is great, so we're staying. Oh, yeah. I can hear guys. I can hear that coming out of the mouth. Like, Or I can hear friends talking about it, and it's like, okay, you're going to meet so-and-so's girlfriend. She's crazy, but she's really hot, and they've got, they have great sex. I'm like, no, I would never. Like, no, I'm out. I'm and, out on that. And not in my – like, literally, I could, I could never because I wouldn't be able to put up with somebody on a daily basis that I did not like being around. In any capacity. When I hear that about people, I'm like, wait, hold on. So you're telling me y'all are just like oh, having erupting fights, but the sex is so good. You just discard those. Like, I'm like, I would go crazy. Yeah, no, I, I could never. I agree. But it's such a funny term because I've heard it so many times, but I think it's so like, and maybe it is mainly from our parents. Um, generation. Generation, because back in their generation and when, and their parents, like people didn't marry for love all the time. That's true. People did just kind of marry. People married because they wanted like the, the trophy wife or the man who could, like, the breadwinner or the girl who will cook and stay home with the kids. Like people didn't marry. Cause not a lot of people didn't say like, oh, I married them because I love them. Right. They, they would say I married them because they'd provide a good life for me. And it made sense. Now imagine that. Imagine if you picked the girl and you were like, she'll provide a good home life for me. He'll work well. And the sex was good on top of that. That would be a real winner. Yeah. But you're right. Other than that, I mean, I just... I can't imagine staying because the sex was so good and then everything else was not. I'm like, what? No. Maybe it's like such fireworks. I don't know. I, don't know. I think that's the show. <laughs> Happy summer. <laughs> I can't believe it's here. Like, I'm so, I'm, so, how do you feel? Let's just really quickly. How do you feel about summer being here? Cause I'm like so excited. Oh my God. I 
literally cannot wait. Last summer was one of the best summers of my life, and I'm so excited for all the crazy adventures we have planned. And I think warm weather makes people want to do more. Also, someone was just saying how New York has like this chaotic energy about it. It's like, no, I think every place in the world when it gets nice for the first time is just like, like on like Monday and Tuesday this week, I just like went to a patio and drank. Like in what world would I have ever done that any other months of the year? You wouldn't, you would sit at home and like cry that we were inside. Like the days of the week don't, aren't as structured in the summer. And I love that. And kids, like kids being out of school, I feel like when school's out, everyone's out. Yeah, and like dating so much more fun, hanging out with your girlfriends is so much more fun, hanging out with your guy friends. Like it's just, I love summer. Yeah, it's, this is going to be, and it's, it's going to be like a great one. Oh, I'm so excited. I, New York makes you appreciate summer more though because you have to go through the hard times to get to good times. Yes, yes, yes. Um, do you want to do what you do best? Like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. Give us a five-star review and subscribe on YouTube. Woo!